He is risen. Oh, goodness. We're not paying attention. Yeah, he is risen, right? He is risen indeed. Hey, we're glad you're here. If you're in the back, grab a bulletin. Come on in. Welcome. We're glad you're part of us. Um, if you want to give, we no longer pass a plate, but there's giving stations in the front and the back. Um, you can use those on your way out. Glad you're here this morning. If you're looking for something for your kids, every Wednesday night we have Little Explorers and Awana. We also have prayer meeting. I want to give a special thank you to everyone who came, who gave eggs, who helped out with our Easter egg hunt. Um, we had a great hunt. There's uh, pictures on Facebook. Um, we did have one kid receive Christ yesterday, so we rejoice in that. Um, our final announcement is new to the Bolton this week. Um, we do have an open arms fellowship lunch in two weeks. Um, so after church, we'll just go upstairs. Um, the ladies provide the main courses. We kind of bring the sides and the desserts. Um, there'll be an insert in your bulletin next week. Will there be an insert in the bulletin next week? Good, I'm getting the official thumbs up. Um, so we'll talk more about that um, next Sunday. I'm going to have Charlotte pray, and we'll be sing begin singing in a moment. Dear Jesus, we're so thankful for this Easter morning. Lord, we just pray that you will meet our hearts this morning, help us to hear from your word, and to worship you in spirit and truth. And Lord, we just pray that if there are any here this morning who don't know you, that they can accept you this morning. Today is always the, the best day for salvation, Lord. And we just, we just pray that um, you will just meet people where they are this morning. And just give us a great Easter day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able to, and join us in worship. How great the chasm that lay between.
And today we're going to do a special song for, for you all called Who Is This Man? And this is a new song. And for those of, us who, those of you who are visiting with us, we usually do a blend between some hymns and contemporary songs. So this is a newer song that our team's been working on, and we're going to do it for you as a special this morning.
Uh, this morning we're going to read from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, when it, when it is in Christ Jesus, Timothy, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day. A great, I greatly desiring you to see you being mindful of your tears, fears, or I'm sorry, it's tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded it is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love and a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which has given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has abolished death and brought forth the immortality to light through the gospel. Thank you. And now we will continue in worship. Please stand as you are able as we continue with Low in the Grave He Lay.
read this study a couple weeks ago. Maybe you saw it as well. It begins by saying this. Over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by the following problems? Um, feeling anxious, nervous, or on edge? So this is the youngest generation, 15 to 25 Gen Z. Millennials, 16 to 41. Uh, Gen X, 42 to 57, and then 58 and up. Have you felt down, depressed, or hopeless? Again, you see the graph. Thoughts that you'd be better off dead or hurt yourself in some way. Youngest generation is 18%, nearly one in five. Does these numbers surprise anybody? Two things are clear to me. One, no matter your age, no one is doing great. I mean, think about it. feeling nervous, anxious, or on edge. The oldest, our seniors, are literally one in three, and the, our uh, teens and 20s are almost two in three. Second thing that's clear is the younger you are, the higher the graph goes. It's almost like a straight line shooting on up. It's crazy, isn't it? But we look at our world, should we be surprised? Um, I guess I'm here to tell you that there's a better way. Our world preaches fear and frustration. Today, I'd like to help you find faith in the midst of the fear and frustration of our world. Again, there's a better way, and I'm glad you're here this morning. Um, we're going to start with this question. It's also the question we're going to end with. It's, have you ever put your trust in Jesus? Have you ever found faith that God has for you and the new life that he wants for you? We're going to pray. We're going to go through uh, a Bible study this morning to help you find faith in the midst of the fear. So God, I pray that you would meet us here, that you would show us a better way, that you so loved us, that you sent your son, that if we would trust in Jesus, we don't have to perish, we can have everlasting life. So God, open our eyes and our ears to hear and see the things you have for us. In Jesus we ask, amen. We're going to start in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1. If you have a Bible, you can open it up, 689. Um, Butch already read us the text. If you have an app on your phone that gives you the Bible, um, we're going to go through the new um, King James Version. Um, you have a bulletin. If you like the, one of those people who like to follow along, we do have three points this morning. First point, personal concern. Um, first off, if you're, well, if you're a visitor here, welcome. First time here in a while, we're glad that you are back. This is a perfect time for you to jump into church. Today we're starting a new Bible study, so you don't have to wonder where we are or what we're doing. Brand new start today. We're glad you're here. This is the book of 2 Timothy. It's written by a person named Paul. Paul was an apostle. Paul wrote about half of the New Testament. Um, Paul often wrote to churches. You know the Bible, you have letters like Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Those are letters to churches. Um, this is the letter of 2 Timothy. It's a letter not to a church, but to a person. It's a second one. The first one he wrote about three years prior. Um, Paul was going through some struggles. He wanted to encourage him. A couple years later, he's following up. Paul, uh, Timothy is still discouraged. So he writes him again. Um, this, if you're a Bible scholar, this is the last letter that Paul wrote. So spiritually, these are his final words. In his final words, he wants to encourage his dear friend. First couple verses are a standard introduction of the day, uh, a welcoming of sorts. Um, verses 3 through 4, you see Paul's concern. It says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did. Without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day. I desire to see you, being mindful of your tears, that you may be filled with joy. So knowing that you're struggling, knowing that this is a hard time, knowing that you're full of tears, I pray for you. Um, nod your head if you've ever seen someone post something online or you ever heard someone go through a hard time and people respond by saying thoughts and prayers. Well, going through that tragedy, thoughts and prayers. You got cancer, thoughts and prayers. How long do those thoughts and prayers usually last? 
Often it only lasts as long as it takes you to type out those three words. Like I paused a moment, I thought about you, but I want you to know that I thought about you, thoughts and prayers. When Paul hears of Timothy's trials, how does Paul respond? He says, look, I wish to visit you. Paul's currently in prison. He can't. So he does the next best thing. He writes him a long personal letter. And he tells him, hey, I'm not saying you thoughts and prayers. No, no, no. Night and day, I'm on my knees. I'm praying for you that you would see God work, that you'd have faith in the midst of your fear and frustration that you're going through. A little different, isn't it? A little different. Verse 5, he reminds Timothy of his spiritual legacy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith, the real life faith that is in you, first of all, in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eusis, and I am persuaded is in you also. So Timothy has this great spiritual legacy. right? He has this real life faith because he has the examples of grandmother and he has the examples of mom, and those faith lessons have been passed down to Timothy. That he had this faith community that he can look upon and he can, um, he can call upon. When I look at the craziness of this world, I'm convinced of two things. That really our kids need two things. One, our kids need to see real life faith examples in us. You saw the graph, right? The, the younger the kids are, the higher the anxiety, the depression, um, the fear in their life is. And what our kids need is they need not more fear, because they get that everywhere. When they come into our homes, whether you're an aunt and an uncle or a cousin, a great-grandmother, they need to see that faith in us. And we need to be the ones passing down the faith legacy to our kids and our grandkids. Because they're going to find fear everywhere. They need to find faith with us. Amen? And the second thing our kids need is they need not just one example, they really need a village. You've all heard the expression, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Nod your head, you heard that expression. We know what the villages out there are like, but really the question we should be asking is this, what is the right village? And I would say church is the best village you're going to find. It's the only place where kids are going to be taught to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's the only village where you're going to see real life examples of what it is to love other people and have compassion and grace and truly care about one another. And this is the village Timothy grew up in. And this is why he has this great spiritual legacy of grandmother and mom and now in him. Right? We've got to be the ones helping our kids and grandkids find faith in all the midst of the fear and frustration of this world. If you follow along, our second point, keep things moving. God's gift. Verse 6 begins this way. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. Some of your translations will fan the flame. I don't know about you, it is great campfire weather, is it not? It's not too hot. It's nice, crisp at night. I had a campfire this weekend, and you, maybe this has happened to you. Have you ever had the situation where the fire just won't get going? You got a couple of embers there, but it just won't ablaze. Now, granted, you can get all the paper you want, but sometimes you just want to work that fire into a flame all on your own. In that position, the, f- the fire's kind of delicate, isn't it? You blow too hard, what's going to happen? Poof. You don't do enough work, it's never going to get going. Look, fan the flame of the gift of God which is in you. For Timothy, the laying on of hands is a reminder that he has the gift of being a pastor. But for us, it is a reminder that God has a spiritual gift for you. It says in the Bible that when you put your trust in Jesus, you're a new creation. The old is past. God makes you new. God changes you from the inside. God gives you his spirit. God has a plan. God has a gift for you. 
And God wants us to continue to grow in faith, to use the gift that God has given us here in this village to encourage one another and to build one another up. Amen? This is part of God's great plan for you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Some of your translations will have timidity. The idea is that God has not given you the spirit that you're a coward, that you should be afraid of everything and anything. And by the way, this is, this is our world, isn't it? Open up your phones, scroll through your news feed. Our world's constantly preaching fear. I was watching the news last night. I know I shouldn't do that. Um, but there was protests yesterday in Nashville. You probably saw the, the shooting. And, and kids were getting up saying, I'm afraid to go to school because of all the gun violence. You know how crazy that is? That fear has just been shown as a part of our everyday life. That fear is not from God. That's from the devil. That is from the things of this world who is trying to blow out that fan of faith in you. God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. That God has given you his spirit, the greatest power in the universe lives in you. Uh, 1 John 4.4 4 says that you are children, you are of God, little children. You have overcome them. Why? Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the... God doesn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power to overcome, to have faith in the midst of the craziness, the frustration of this world. He gives you a spirit of power, a spirit of love, that we love God. He's given us a spirit to love, to have charity, to have compassion, to have grace on one another. That God changes you from the inside out, that everything isn't about you, that we're not selfish, that we actually genuinely care for one another. We want to see the best in one another, that we want to see others grow in their faith and love in Christ. And a sound mind. Man, maybe some of your translations could, could translate this peace of mind. I mean, you saw the numbers, right? In the last two weeks, almost two thirds of our young people have felt anxious or depressed. And even one-third of our older people has found this way. That spirit is not of God. God has given you a spirit of power, of love, of a sound mind. This is part of God's great plan for you. And you might be thinking, well, how do I get that into my life? I understand the fear. I understand the frustration. I understand the anxiety and the nervousness. How do I understand God's plan? There is a better way. It is Easter, so the better way is really the way of the Easter story. And this is the good news. Therefore, do not be ashamed, do not live in fear, the testimony of our Lord, nor me as prisoner, but share with me the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. The word gospel is God's good news for you. Really, it is the Easter story. That God so loved you, he sent his son. He stepped out of heaven. He stepped into our existence. Christmas, he was born. He lived, he shared, and showed the love of God. That God so loved you, Jesus being perfect, went to the cross to pay for your sin. We'll come back to that word in a minute. Now, Jesus bled, he died, he was in the tomb, and on the third day, Jesus rose again. He has the power to feed our sin, our fear, our shame. It's by his stripes we are healed. If you would trust in Jesus, you don't have to perish, you can have everlasting life. This is the Easter story. Again, we just, I just quoted John 3.16, For God so loved the world, he so loved you, he gave his only son. 
that if you would believe in Jesus, you don't have to perish, you can have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come so we would live a life full of fear. But Jesus is the better way, that the world might be saved, that through him the world might be saved. If you look at verse 9, it says, Who has saved us and has called us with a holy calling. Okay, God has a holy calling. God has a, a better plan for my life. But first it says that we must be saved. And you might be thinking, saved from what? A couple of Bible verses. I want to walk you through the un, understand what we must be saved from. Romans 3, 10 and 23. 3, 10 says, There's none righteous, no, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. That's the way our world lives, doesn't it? Right? What it means is we all have sinned. What is sin? We all fall short of the glory of God. When you look at your life, do you fall short of God's glory, of God's perfection, of God's holiness? And we would all go, yep, me, guilty as charged. For you young ones, let me explain to you what this means. Do you say things that you shouldn't say? And then we would go, yep, me, guilty as charged. And some of you go, I don't say any bad things. Do you say bad words? Do you lie to your parents? Do you lie to your teachers? Are you mean to your friends? Instead of being loving, do you cut them down? And we'd go, yep, me, guilty as charge. We do things we shouldn't do. Right? Instead of be loving, we hit, we fight. And I know, even your young ones, you fight with your siblings, right? Nope, never, not at all. No, redheads are, are twice as guilty. And what's even worse is our thoughts. Because sometimes we do have a little restraint and it doesn't get out of our lips, but man, up here, if people could see what goes on up here, are we guilty of, do we fall short of the glory of God? And we go, yep, me, guilty as charged. God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were sinners, though while we are guilty, though while we fall short, Christ died for us, that our sin, that our imperfection was poured upon him, that Jesus being perfect died for us who mess and screw up. The wages of our sin is death, spiritual death, physical death, separation from God here on this earth, separation from God for all of eternity. Right? We choose our own way, we are separated from God. And if we continue to choose our own way, here on this earth, we're going to be separated from God for all of eternity. Wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life, that God has a better plan for you. We can't earn our way to God by being good. We can't save ourselves. He came to save us. That if you would believe, you don't have to perish, you can have everlasting life. The Easter story. We're sinful, and we need a Savior. So Jesus stepped out of the heavens, lived among us, died on the cross, was buried, rose again. And we're going to get into that in a moment. For verse 10. But he has revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. That Jesus died, was buried, but on the third day he rose again. The tomb was empty. The stone is rolled away. When they went in, Jesus wasn't there because Jesus is alive. Jesus rising shows two things. He has this power to forgive our sins, and he has power over death. And it's just as Jesus arose and abolished death for all those who believe in him, though we may physically die, our spirit lives on. We will live eternity with God in heaven. 
And this is what salvation is. That not only does he have a plan for our life, but he also has a plan for our eternity. But he has revealed, appearing our Savior, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality into life. That he gives us new life and immorality. Immorality is eternal, that our spirit lives on forever. But here and now, God gives us new life. That when we're in Christ, we are a new creation. The old is past. God gives us a spirit. He changes us from the inside. He makes us new. That we can have faith in the midst of all the frustration and fear because God lives in us. Life and immorality to light through the gospel. Not through our hard work, not through our education, not through our paycheck, not through our giving or our good deeds, through the gospel. Because of the Easter story, we can have new life and we can have victory through Christ. God so loved you, he sent his son. And if you would believe in Jesus, you don't have to perish. You can have everlasting life. This is the good news of Easter for everyone who believes. Amen? Got two questions for you as we wrap up this Easter message. The first is, have you ever trusted in Jesus as your Savior? Maybe you're here because you come every Sunday. Maybe it's the first time you've been here in a while. Maybe it's the first time you've ever been here. It doesn't matter your past. God has a plan for you now. You've heard the story. You understand the message. You might hear it up here, but you believe it here. Have you ever put your trust in Jesus as your Savior? Do you know you're forgiven? Have you experienced new life in Christ? Do you know for sure when you pass, you're going to spend eternity with God in heaven? Right? If you've never done that, right where you are, in the quietness of your heart, bow your head, and in your own words, pray to God. Say, hey, I'm a sinner. I fall short. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and he rose again. And today I choose to put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. If you do that, let me know. Love to celebrate with you the things that God is doing in your life and explain how you can have new life in Christ. Second, are you giving into the fear or are you living by faith? Are you giving into the fear? Are you living by faith? We saw the stats. We understand the fear that's being sown into this world. What our kids and our grandkids, our, our nieces, our nephews, what the generations need to see in us isn't people who are filled with fear, but people who are living by faith. We need to be the community that's passing on that spiritual legacy to our kids and our grandkids. And if all they see is the fear being sown into us from pick your news source, pick your social media feed, then they're really not getting anything better than the world. Right? God has given us such a great message. God has given us a better way through Christ. Are you giving into the fear or are you living by faith? Look, if you're living by faith, I know it's hard. Sometimes you just got to shut out all the noise in, in the world around us. That people see pe people of faith in us. Let's pray together. Father, we're so thankful that you've given us your son. That you loved us. And that you came and you showed your love through the cross. That Jesus died for our sins. Was buried in a tomb. But over the th on the third day he abolished death. He rose again. He is alive forevermore. 
God, I pray that if there's one here who does not have new life in Christ, then, Lord, that you would work on their hearts even now, that they would bow their head, that they choose to put their faith in Jesus as their Savior. It's in Christ we ask. Amen. Great way to end this morning. Stand, sing with us. I serve a risen Savior. Of you, you know Christ lives in your heart. You've experienced forgiveness that comes through Jesus alone. You have found faith in the midst of all the fear. Look, if you have questions, if you have doubt, if you're not sure, come. There'll be people here in the front. They'd love to talk with you. They'd love to answer your questions. They'd love to make sure you know for sure that Christ lives in you. Let's pray. Happy Easter. We'll be dismissed. Father, we're so thankful that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again, he abolished death. Lord, he defeated our sin. It's through Christ we can be forgiven and have a home in heaven. God, I pray that you would allow us to find faith in the midst of our fear. Lord, that we would choose faith this week. Lord, that we'd hear your voice in the midst of all the other voices around us. So it's in Christ we ask. Amen.